Welcome to Module 1 of Infernia's training sessions. Through a series of training modules, we will be helping you to understand how to work on Infernia as an end-to-end -end platform for all your designing needs. In the first session, we will try to understand how to start modeling a project and what are the important tools necessary for the same. Open the website login.infernia.com and you will see the option to log in to Infernia. Since your organization is already partnered with Infernia, you can log in directly using either login with Google or you can manually input the mail ID and click on login. I'll select login with Google and in the pop-up that appears, you can choose the organization that you work for under which the mail ID is registered. I'll be selecting Infernia store. You will be directed to the home page of your Infernia account. The home page shows a recently worked projects by default for quick access and when you click on view all projects, you can see all the projects that you have worked on. To create a new project, click on the new project option on the left hand side of your screen and a pop-up will appear asking for the details of the project that you want to create. You can name it as per your requirement. I'm naming it Villa 12 with the client name Rahul Singh and the project ID ideally should be a unique number that you can use to track your project in the future and should align with the company standards. Click on create project and a new project will be created. This technically creates a folder space for your project Villa 12. Herein, inside this you can create multiple versions of your design. By clicking on start new design, you can select the template as required. There are two types of template you can select from, the organization template and the default templates. So the default templates is something that Infernia provides to all its users and the organization templates are the ones that you or anyone in your organization would have created for reference. When you select on either of these options, a new project is now created for you. In the workspace here, you can start modeling your project. You can create multiple versions of your design inside the same folder. When you hover over the thumbnail of the design, you can see a settings button appear and when you click on that, you get different options wherein you can make any changes that are required like you can edit the name of the design suppose I want to call it concept 1 and update similarly you can also copy this in any of your projects the project that is currently active will have an active option written next to it for your reference select the destination of the paste that you want and the design will be pasted in that particular folder so I'm pasting it here and a copy of the concept one is now created. You can also lock the design once it's completed. However, please be careful since once the design is locked, you will not be able to edit it until and unless the end admin of your organization unlocks it for you. And the last option is you can delete the particular design. Infernia offers you the flexibility to store and organize all the design files related to a particular project under one folder. When you click on the view all projects tab, you will be shown all the projects that you have worked on. These technically work as folders inside which all your design files are stored. Suppose I click on the view design next to B101 Sunrise Park and all the design files that I've created for this proje particular project will be shown. This helps you to organize and store all your design files related to a particular project in one single folder such that there is no misplace of data or files. At the top left of your workspace, you can see the different types of views you can select while modeling. When you select the world option, all the buildings you have in your workspace can be viewed. In the next option, building, you can select which building you want to see. 
If your building has multiple floors, you can select which floor you want to work on. And finally, which room in that floor you want to model. In this case, only the bedroom will be visible so that you can focus on the modeling here. When you pan around your model in this view, any wall which might disrupt your viewing of the interior turns invisible automatically. You are only allowed to make changes to your model in the floor or room view of your model. In all other views of your model like world and billing, it will be shown in a lighter shade which means that you are not allowed to draft in this particular views. Kindly select the floor or the room view to make any changes that you require. At the top of your workspace, you can see different tabs under which all your tools that are required to model in Infernia are present. When you select the Home tool, you will be able to see the first tool which is Preferences, wherein you can set all your global preferences for your design. You have the Branch tool, wherein you can share any design that you want with someone from your organization or your customer service team if required. You also have the undo, redo and move button here. The rest of the tools here are the most commonly used tools from the other tabs. When you go into the view tab, you will see different options like lock camera position, rich floor view, which are related to how you want to view your design. When you check the insert option, you have furnish and lighting. We'll be able to add different sort of furnitures like cabinets, sofas, dining tables, etc. And lights wherein you'll be able to add ceiling light, wall light, etc. You have the draw option wherein your 2D tools to draw are available. And the architecture tool where you have the most important tools like wall, door, window, etc. You have the note tab wherein you have options for adding text, compass and dimensioning to your drawing. The renders tab wherein you have the different options regarding the renders, whether you want to generate a render or you want to view a render, export it, etc. The last option is the production tab wherein all details regarding production like schedule, pricing, cut list are available. Each of the tool in these tabs will be explained in details in the upcoming video. On the left hand side of your screen, you can see the design details panel. Here, when no tool or element is selected, this shows the details of the project like project name, design name, client name and project ID. However, when you activate any particular tool, like let's say I am activating the straight line tool. The preference of how you want to use the tool gets activated here and you can make the selections as required before you start using the tool itself. If you select any particular element in your model, like let's say I am selecting this particular cabinet, then the details of this cabinet gets activated here and you'll be able to make changes into the module however you want like when I have selected the kitchen module the details like carcass, skirting, shutter etc are shown here and you can make the required changes. On the bottom left of your screen where you see the global preferences and settings if you click on any of these like let's say I am clicking on the layer setting then the details of the layer setting are also shown in this particular panel itself. This is the usability of the panel here, which is called the Design Details panel. On the top right corner of your screen, you can see three options, Flow Plan, 3D and Elevation. When you click on Flow Plan, the 2D drawing of your civil layout and furniture planning from a top view is shown. When you click on 3D, you can see the three-dimensional view of your entire model. When you click on elevation, you can see a drop down next to it and whatever elevations you have already set, you can check the view of those elevations. We suggest that you use the elevation view only in rooms. First, select the room that you want to view and then select the elevation that you want to show. 
you can see this is the elevation of the kitchen when you create elevations in floor view there's a lot of clutter that you can see from the other rooms as well which is not relevant hence it is suggested that you use the elevation tool only in the room view On the left bottom of your screen, on the global preferences and settings, you have the option called preferences. If you click on this, you'll get the options to set your preference for the designs. Typically, the preference of whatever is set through the admin portal of your organization is accepted in your designs. But if you want to make any manual changes for the particular design, then you can definitely do that. Under select the preference, you can set in which area you want to make changes. Suppose if I select kitchen, then you can set the preference of your design for all the kitchen details. Under carcass, you'll get the option to set your core materials, the back core material, external finish, internal finish and edge binding. For example, if you want to specify the core material, you can select the toggle option here. And you'll get the option to select whichever core material you want. Suppose I want to specify it as post laminated MDF of 16 mm MDF of 16 mm MDF plane. So I can select on that and the preference will be set for my entire design. Similarly, you can set the other finishes as well. This is for the carcass. You can also specify regarding the finishes of the shutter when, by selecting the shutter tab here. You can specify what design of the shutter you require, which means the profiling. When you select this, you have the different options like whether you want a glass shutter, a wooden shutter, and what profiling you need. You also have the option of what external finish you want by default and what are the internal finish core material edge binding for the same. Let's say, for example, I want to specify that the external finish of my material has to be American maple. So I'll select this and any cabinet I install here after will have the external finish in the shutter as American maple. You can also specify the handle that you want. First, click on enable. And under the handles option, you, you can select handles here. And you can select whichever handle you want to specify. Let's say I'm taking antique handle. You can also specify the countertop. Select finish. And under finish, you can select whichever countertop you want. Let's say I'm selecting granite of charcoal black. The same goes for skirting. Suppose I want a wooden skirting. And I can specify the finish that I want in my skirting. Let me specify that I want finish as American maple again. So after setting the preferences, if you add any furniture, then let's say I'm adding a base unit. Then when you sit, check the base unit, you can see that the carcass is a 16 mm. MDF plane, the shutter is Amer American maple. You can see that the countertop, you can see that the countertop is granite solid surface. So when you set the preferences before starting the design, any furniture you add will capture those preferences by default. The same goes for wardrobes as well. If you select wardrobe here, then you can again specify the preferences for carcass, shutter, handle and skirting and the same will be recorded when you in add any furniture from wardrobes. You can use the scroll wheel of your mouse to zoom in and out of your model. Click on the scroll wheel or the right click of your mouse to pan across your model while maintaining the same level of zoom. Please note that by pressing shift plus left click of your mouse you can select any model in your workspace. If you move towards your right, all elements that are completely inside your selection range will be captured. And if you move towards your left, then any element which is completely or partially inside the selection range will be captured. Under the home tab, you have an option of undo, redo and move. So if by mistake I have deleted the dining table here, I can click on undo 
or redo as per required. You also have the option of move wherein you can move any element that is there in your flow plan in the flow plan view or in the 3D view. Suppose if I want to move this sofa, then I just have to select it and I can move it anywhere required. As you can see, it snaps to the nearest wall that if I do not want it to snap, then I can select the shift option and the snapping is disabled. Similarly, for undo and redo, you also have the uh, typical shortcuts, which is control plus Z for undo and con control plus Y for redo. If you're using a MacBook, then the shortcuts would be command plus Z and command plus Y respectively. Thank you for watching.